Buenos dias a todos y todas. Um, mi nombre es Kevin Kelsen y soy el gerente de producto um, del proyecto uh, Light Farm. Gracias por uh, acompañarme hoy. And, uh, lo siento mucho, pero no hablo español muy bien, así que la presentación será en inglés hoy. Um, so today I'll be speaking about Light Farm and as Eric's mentioned, it's an open source ag tech tool for helping sustainable uh, and diversified farmers manage their farms as well. Um, I'll also be talking about Open Team, which is an open source consortium uh, that we're a participant in. So quickly, our agenda for today is I'll talk about how Light Farm started, uh, where we are now. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about our mission statement, our goals, our strategy for achieving those goals. Uh, we'll look a little bit into the roadmap. Of course, the roadmap is always subject to change, and we would love to hear, you know, voices from the the community uh, to, you know, what they they think should be built, and then also anyone that is interested in in building some of these features. And then we'll talk about some of the ways that uh, Light Farm engages in open source, uh, specifically around Open Team, and then individual contributors as well. And then I'd like to have a few minutes for Q&A. So Light Farm began in 2016 as a simple tool to help farmers calculate the true cost of production per crop at the UBC farm. So that's the University of British Columbia. Um, at the time, there weren't any publicly available or open source tools to understand how much a particular broccoli or melon cost the farm to, to produce. I was developed by two professors, Dr. Whitman and Marabi, with a team of part-time students, and you'll, you'll see the students there. I was extensively co-designed and beta tested by farmers and farmer organizations across Canada. Uh, today, we have a simple farm management app, able to log farm operations, uh, capture cost per crop, provide high-level financials, and provide basic sustainability insights. Uh, on the right there, you can see some of the insights that, that you might capture in a particular farm. Um, at the bottom, you can see some of our usage statistics when it comes to logins. However, this is only the beginning. Uh, I joined the team back in May, and a big part of my mandate was one, to develop a strategy to help expand the impact of Light Farm, and then also to build a team and a community uh, to deliver on that strategy. So in the last six months, uh, we've built a mostly full-time scrum team. So we've got three full-time student engineers from the, the UBC, uh, one senior engineer. Um, myself, we have a subject matter expert, so a, a farmer that is helping us build the app on a regular basis, a research associate. And we're also hiring for two positions right now. Uh, a QA engineer, this person would also do some support activities for, for users. And then we're also hiring a, a UX designer as well. And for reasons that will become very clear in just a minute, we very much welcome remote and foreign candidates, especially in Central and Latin America, um, to apply for these positions. So our mission is to meet farmers where they are and equip them with the tools they need to make informed and responsible decisions about the health of their farm, their livelihood, the community and the planet. And our goal is to put Light Farm in the hands of 10,000 farmers uh, by 2023. So how do we plan to achieve this mission to get to this scale? Um, our strategy is three pronged. Uh, the first is a focus on usability and utility for diversified farmers. This means as we're designing the app, our guiding principle is that perfection is achieved not when there's nothing more to add, when there's nothing left to take away. We agonize over each field we show on the app. We agonize over anything that is required as an input. Uh, what can we infer at any given point? What can we think about so that our user doesn't have to? So let's take an example from our onboarding screen. Um, and in the current version of the app on the left, you can see we asked for four pieces of input, the name of the farm, the farm address, the units, so either metric or imperial, and a currency. And then in the new version of the app, we've simplified this significantly. Uh, we're assuming units and currency based on the location of the app. Um, 
And we've also added some simplicity. There's more feedback in understanding uh, what we're looking for with farm location. The, the user can also just click on their present location to pull down the coordinates from the Google Maps API. Uh, and then we're also giving feedback with the, the button to say, you can't click on this until you've entered these two required uh, fields. But that's just one, one prong of our strategy. Uh, the second one is probably our biggest carrot to help farmers uh, adopt is to help them achieve financial success for, with their farms. Concretely, we're approaching this through in-app certifications. So a farmer can use our app to gather all of the data that they need in order to get an organic certification with a local certifier. Um, and then we're also giving them insight into the, the costs uh, and revenues associated with our farm, specifically with particular crops. So a farmer can see that if they grow broccoli and beans and squash, maybe squash is profitable and broccoli is profitable, uh, but beans are not, uh, they could make the decision to, to use to grow fewer beans next year. Or maybe beans are beneficial to the soil quality, and that's the reason that they do it. You know, they could find out both of those things by using our app. Lastly, we want to connect farmers with expert knowledge and tools to improve their practice. So you can see on the bottom right here of the slide, uh, the bottom right and the top right, that we're really looking to integrate with open source projects out there uh, to provide the expert knowledge uh, that farmers need in order to make the right decisions on their farms. We really see Light Farm as an easy to approach app uh, to manage your farm. And then if a farmer wants to know uh, about carbon sequestration, we would link to a, a domain specific service or tool that, that provides that. So to operationalize the strategy, we're partnering with farmer organizations around the world. Uh, for 2021, we're really focusing on cohorts in Central and South America. Uh, we have partnerships with more than a dozen farmer organizations in, in those locations, and we plan to deploy Light Farm to cohorts of farmers in five Latin American countries starting in January. So Brazil, Ecuador, Mexico, Paraguay, and Peru. Uh, and for this reason, it's really, really helpful if we, we have uh, individuals on our team that are familiar with uh, working in these areas um, and, and speak Spanish or, or Portuguese fluently. So again, highly recommend that you check out our career site if this is a project that seems interesting to you. Um, and let me talk a little bit about the features that we're building in order to support this expansion. Our theme for the, the next quarter uh, with a release scheduled for January is international and accessible. So we're simplifying almost all of the interactions in the app. Uh, we've got a new simplified onboarding flow. We've got a step-by-step -step farm setup to help farmers that don't use software on a regular basis get up to speed. Uh, we also have dynamic organic certification. So that is, I enter the data into, into Light Farm as I'm you know, running my farm. And at the end of the season, I press a button and I can get an export of all of that data to share with my certifier. Uh, of course, we're working on Spanish and Portuguese language support, in-app notifications, and then finally, and most importantly, your contributions. You know, we have a, a portal that I've linked down there at the bottom uh, where users, potential users, interested contributors can suggest ideas uh, uh, for our, our roadmap and then they can upvote them, they can add comments, etc. So we're really looking to involve the community as much as possible. Longer term candidates, uh, you can also see on, on our portal but task-based farm management, advanced labor, financial and inventory tracking to help uh, farmers really manage their, their farms effectively, livestock, crop scenario planning. So, you know, if I plant maize uh, at, for 75% of this field, what does it look like versus 50% of this field? And we would love to do that both in financial terms, but also in environmental and social terms as well. Um, and of course, the most important thing is Things that are farther on the roadmap are, are things that, uh, you know, are very, very uncertain. So we would love the, the ideas from communities like this and, and uh, those interested in open source. So the way that we're currently engaging with open source cons uh, communities and consortia um, is to help build common infrastructure. So especially when it comes to ag tech, uh, there's a lot of shared data that, that should be usable across kind of the, the whole ecosystem. 
you know, ontologies around what does a, a crop mean? What does a field mean? What does a, a task that you perform on your farm mean, right? The more that we can make this uniform across all apps, uh, the easier it is for farmers to adopt and use the software and, and use, you know, one piece of software as an entry into a whole collection of others. Um, we're also looking at integrations to connect farmers to latest science. So that's a big part of our strategy. Uh, brainstorming, collaboration, information sharing. Uh, we have an open wiki that, that you know, we, we post a lot of our strategy and our information and the data that we have. Um, and we rely on other communities as well to try to like create the this whole source of knowledge for the the ag tech space. And then of course, um, Light Farm is a an open source nonprofit uh, project. So joint funding proposals to expand our reach uh, to to reach particular communities that that might benefit from the the tool. And I want to take a moment to talk about Open Team. Uh, so this is a an open source consortium that is specifically uh, looking at sustainable farming, right? So Light Farm is a, a member as well as the UBC Farm where Light Farm started. Um, and it has a, a bunch of different partners and, and various tools that are participating uh, to really make the as many tools and as much science available to these types of farmers as possible. Uh, some of the things that Open Team focuses on are uh, shared toolkits for farmers, field technicians, agronomists, and others. Um, ways to assess the, you know, the success of your farm. Um, we're, we're trying to give more control of farm data back to farmers and away from the, you know, the seed distributors uh, or the, you know, the tractor producers uh, who are taking farmers' data right now and, and largely commoditizing it and, and selling it back to them or selling to other partners. Uh, similar to like a Facebook approach. So a big part of Life Farm is that farmers own their data even after the point when they enter it into the system. And the only reason that we we would share data uh, is for research purposes. Um, and even in that case, it would be anonymized. So data ownership, data sovereignty on on part of farmers is a big part of the push for both Life Farm and then also for the Open Team community. So I'm getting to the end of my time. So I just wanted to close up uh, with a few resources. Um, I encourage you to take a look at our website, learn a little bit more. Uh, we are a young product, a young project, a young community. Um, so I imagine as we, we gain momentum through, 20, through the remainder of the year in 2021, uh, more information will be there. But I've worked really hard, the team has worked really hard to, to get a lot of resources out there to help uh, anyone that's interested in learning more or contributing. So please check out our, our careers page. You can take a look at our, our repo on GitHub. Uh, we have a wiki where you can learn more about the, the product. We've got two builds. Uh, our beta build is built on a bi-weekly basis at the, the very least um, at the end of each sprint. We've also got a stable build that comes out uh, four times a year for a seasonal release. Uh, we've got an API doc that's available if, if you're looking to integrate. Um, and then, as I mentioned a few times, we have a roadmap and feature portal uh, where we would love feedback, uh, comments, upvotes, downvotes, new ideas, whatever. And with that, um, I think I'm going to wrap up. Uh, I've included my contact information on here if you want to learn more about Life Farm. I've also in included the community manager for Open Team. Uh, her name is Laura Demmel, um, and she was not able to join us today but she is fantastic and, and we're both looking for involvement from open source communities. So I think with that, uh, I am happy to take any questions there may be. Great, I mean, well, you, you are really good at this. I mean, you took your time to explain everything and you explained it. <laughs> Super cool, thank you. Uh, well, we have a couple of questions ready. The first one uh, you already answered is if you have projects in developing countries, uh, and if so, well, how can people uh, engage and, and uh, be part of these groups of these organizations? So mm -hmm. it's like, if, do you have the list of like the organizations in, in Mexico, Ecuador, Paraguay, Brazil? I do. Um, I don't have it on my slides here. Oh, but I can I can definitely share the the groups. 
Um, so if someone Sorry, I just need to switch. No can worries. Hear me? Oh. I, I can hear you, yeah. So you, you can, okay, if you can share like the organizations that are involved in the, the project will be great. Uh, and as well, like how people get uh, involved. We have one more question. Uh, oh, this is an important one. Uh, do you provide data related to uh, weather forecasting, like meteorological forecasting for farmers to use? We do not provide it. Uh, we have an integration with open weather, and then that goes into some of the algorithms that, that are being used in the app. For example, we do uh, some calculations around evaporation, uh, like water balance in the soil based on the temperature and the wind speed and such. Um, we are looking for next year into integrations with uh, some hardware integrations for weather stations, in which case we may actually be capturing the data directly from the hardware. Uh, but right now we're just using open open weather as our source for weather data. Awesome. So it's it's integrating with upper weather for now, but in the future it will be with IoT devices that directly capture like the weather. It's super cool. Yeah. 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 I mean, we would love to get there. Um, <laughs> so we have a proposal right now for for that uh, type of work. And it all comes through to, to whether or not it gets funded. Awesome. But that's awesome. definitely something we're interested in, in working on in the future. Awesome. Okay. Uh, one more question. Uh, which are the criteria for farmers in Latin American countries to, to join uh, Line Farm, like to be part of like the user base of Line Farm? Oh, yeah. Great question. So there is none. If you're a farmer and you would find Light Farm useful, you can go to lightfarm.org. You can sign up. There's no cost. You can uh, build your farm in the app. There's no issues with, with doing that. Uh, you don't have to contact us or any of our partners. You can just do it today. Uh, the way that we are expanding in these countries is that we're working with local farmer organizations uh, who will actually, we're training them they're training the, the individual farmers so that they can use the app to, to manage their operations. So right now we're not focusing our outreach on individual farmers. We're focusing on going through farmer organizations so that those farmers have more support in using the app. But there are no restrictions. If you have a farm today, you can log on and start using it and, and reach out if you have any issues. Great. Thank you, thank you, Kevin. Uh, I love this project because it's it's about bringing a very good user experience to people that really need it. <laughs> so it, it, it's it's super awesome. Uh, I don't see any more questions on the screen. Uh, oh, a good one. Ah, this is hard one, Kevin. So are the Latin American partners? also supporting the local organic certifications. Uh, I remember that Light Farm had a lot of like uh, connection with the local or organic uh, uh, association near British Columbia, right? How about other like more localized organizations like in Mexico or in Brazil? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. And the answer is yes. So with our January release, we'll support uh, organic certification through the partner in British Columbia. We'll also have a generic export of forms. And then we, we anticipate with our spring or summer release, we'll support many different local certifiers uh, in the countries where we're working in Central and, and Latin America. Great. I, I like that people keep track on, on like really these sort of topics. <laughs> uh, I don't have any other question, Kevin, uh, but, oh no, I do have, yeah, <laughs> uh, one, oh, this is interesting, uh, but probably, well, it, does it have to be a kind of a special, a special crop or agriculture, or does it support livestock, like pigs, like cattle? Mm. Yeah, very good question. Uh, it does not right now. That is something that is on our roadmap because uh, a lot of the organic and diversified farms, they really they work on the interaction between crops and livestock, right? So you grow the crop, you feed the livestock with the crop, and then you use the manure from the 
the livestock to uh, fertilize the crop. We do not support that right now, but that is something that we would absolutely like to build and we plan on building uh, probably for our summer 2021 release. And since this is an open source project and if somebody wants to start working on this, it will be yeah. awesome that I can yeah. take a look and say like, oh, for livestock, I will make this sort of thing. Yeah, I would love to work with anyone that, that knows about livestock um, and would, would like to help us kind of build this out, both design wise and then also in code. That would be fantastic. Uh, and one more question. Uh, and, and well, which are the main features or benefits uh, of Light Farm uh, to attract people to use it? I mean, how, how is Light Farm attractive for farmers? Yeah, great question. So right now, Light Farm is essentially a fancy notebook. Um, it allows farmers to document all of the things that they do. So they can say, I planted tomatoes in this field on this day. I uh, picked pests on this day, I irrigated on this day, I harvested on this day, I sold 100 kilos of tomatoes at this farmer's market on this day. And what they can do with that is they can create a timeline of from the day that it was planted all the way to the day that it was sold, and then all of the expenses on the farm, all of the expenses that can be tied to a specific crop, all of the revenues from selling a specific crop so that they get this really concrete understanding of the profitability of their farm, right? They can say, this is a profitable crop, this is not a profitable crop, or this is a crop that is changing the soil health in a bad way. So even if it is profitable, perhaps I don't want to do that. So it gives them a way to capture a lot of the operations of their farm. And then through our insights to understand how uh, their actions are changing both their financial position and the environmental position and the social uh, position of the farm within the community. Right. Thank you. I don't know so, if that answered the, uh, the question of the, uh, the questioner, but I, I hope that gives you a better idea. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, and, and well, uh, people probably don't realize how much work that farmers need to do in order to like, produce <laughs> the food and, and a lot of that work is not locked anywhere i mean no not every farmer has a, a, a registry of what they are doing like yeah. step by step and they don't have all that information but just on their heads yeah on, exactly. on other people's heads so life farm really brings this all data all these data into a place where like people can see it and, and then improve based on that and it Light Farm is built for farmers, but a secondary purpose of it is to help researchers understand exactly what you're talking about. You know, if there's a farmer that has been growing 50 crops on the side of a hill in very rural Peru, you know, they have a lot of knowledge about how to do that effectively. So a part of Light Farm is to help get that knowledge out of farmers' heads so that scientists, scientists can help both that farmer with better techniques, but then it, help uh, farmers learn from each other on successful techniques in their particular community. Yeah, that's super cool. <laughs> uh, one more question. Again, so many questions, Kevin. Uh, very easy one. Do you support concurrent users for a single farm? Yes, absolutely. So um, we built out a multi-user to multi-farm ability uh, in our last release. And the, the main use case we have there is that if you own a farm and you have 10 farm workers, you can invite them to participate and use Light Farm on your farm. Uh, we also support the use of extension officers. So that is like government or NGO workers uh, that can access your farm, kind of look at what you're doing and make suggestions uh, on how you can improve it. So, yes, absolutely. Yeah, it, it was it was a creepy one. It was hard. <laughs> it was hard to implement that feature. Uh, good. I have one more question, and this is mine, Kevin, so that people know about this. I mean, how has been the relationship within the University of British Columbia uh, with you that you come from, like, the industry, like, creating products, like, building, like, software that people use, like, for commercial purposes, and, and uh, working with students and, and 
now moving to let's say a uh, more like community development that it's making this an open source i mean how, how is your experience with universities industry and community working together so i i can say comes to working with the university, it's been a fantastic experience. Uh, they provide a lot of support. The fact that we can include uh, students as our, our engineering staff both helps those engineers, you know, develop their professional skills and, and get experience working uh, with a real technology team and working on open source software. Uh, but it also makes it very cost effective, right? Because we can offer them both credit through the university and then also payment for their services together. So it's kind of a win-win, right? And we've actually built our, our team structure around the idea of building this, this really important software, but then also helping uh, these students uh, develop their skills. So uh, working with them and working with the power of a university that has tens of thousands of employees um, and billions of dollars is really, really successful. And I've worked on other open source projects. And in my experience, it's, it's very rare that you can put together a full-time scrum team um, on a, a project that's open source where everyone's working full time. So that, that's been a really great experience. The professors that I'm working with are, are really great. The team is fantastic. Um, so I would highly encourage anyone that's interested, you know, please reach out. Very, very friendly folks, uh, very welcoming to, to new individuals. Um, we have a lot of resources that we can put behind this. Uh, the second part about the community, we're a very young project. Uh, we only open source Least just last week. A lot of the resources that, that I showed you um, here are actually things that are have been published within the last week or two, right? So we're just trying now to, to start, up, start up the, the contributor community uh, by putting a lot of our resources out there. So if, if folks were to join, you, you would be in the, the first five to 10 individuals uh, to take a look at this. And we, we're really excited about growing that side of, of the Light Farm, Light Farm project. Thank you, thank you, Kevin. I, I really like encourage and really invite everybody to like watch this project. And, and it, many times we believe like, oh, what can I do to make uh, the world a bit better uh, or contribute in a way that it's meaningful? Well, there are many options. Now you have one that, that we're presenting you here and at that. It, it's really pretty, it's really nice, like the whole objective and how this is considered. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Kevin, for your time. Uh, I really appreciate that you join us today and that you share Light Farm. Uh, much, much appreciated. Thank you very much. Muchas, muchas gracias. Um, I will switch quickly to Spanish uh, to give some uh, information, some notification, uh, uh, so that people know how this uh, event will go on. But Thank you. Thank you very much, Kevin. Much, much appreciated. All right. Well, thank you so much, Erickson. And thanks for everyone that was listening. Um, I look forward to, to speaking with you in the future and hopefully getting you involved with Light Farm. Take care. Muchas gracias. Hola, hola a todos. Bueno, eh, con esto cerramos el día de hoy la, las charlas, nuestros keynotes. Eh, les agradezco muchísimo, muchísimo por haber estado al pendiente de las distintas charlas que ha, hemos tenido en el evento. Muchas gracias por participar con sus preguntas, por pues, eh, estar ahí escuchándonos, por avisarnos de los problemas técnicos que hemos tenido. De verdad, se los agradecemos mucho para pues, mejorar este, este evento cada día. Pero no se acaba, no se acaba porque todavía tenemos una parte muy, muy importante que es el sprint de contribución. Entonces tenemos, este, vamos a empezar el día de mañana a las 2 de la tarde con una pequeña sesión de apertura para compartir la dinámica y la mecánica de cómo va a ser el sprint de 2 a 3 de la tarde, eh, una sesión eh, de preguntas y respuestas y, y de explicar cómo va a ser la mecánica para poder eh, participar en este sprint. Y desde las 3 de la tarde de mañana y hasta las 7 de la noche este, vamos a tener este sprint de contribución donde pues, queremos destrozar el Hacktoberfest. 
y ganarle a todo mundo en la mayor cantidad de posibles contribuciones que, que subamos con pull request que sí valgan la pena, que sí sean útiles, no, no cualquier cosa, sino cosas funcionales reales, documentación, localización, código, pruebas, eh, issues levantados. Queremos que, que valga la pena el tener una cumbre de contribuidores para contribuir mucho a los proyectos en los que pues ya nos han explicado y nos van a seguir explicando en los talleres de contribución cómo poder contribuir, cómo poder apoyar a estos proyectos open source que nos interesan. Y, pues, bueno, es el día de mañana comienza y termina hasta el, eh, el siguiente día, hasta el día sábado, donde vamos a tener ya un cierre por la noche con, eh, pues, los campeones del sprint de contribución este, que, pues, esperemos logren bastantes, bastantes cosas. Todos se animen a contribuir, se animen a empezar durante estos días y, y se ganen su playera de Hacktober Fest. Y el gusto, sobre todo, de haber podido contribuir a eh, pues hacer un mundo mejor, ¿no? El poder construir algo que todos estamos utilizando. Entonces, eh, síganos todavía en redes sociales de Software Guru, de Open Source México, el hashtag COS. Eh, en el Slack vamos a estar todavía bastante, bastante activos. Acuérdense que ahorita empiezan ya los talleres. Si no se han registrado todavía, tenemos muy, muy buenos talleres del día de hoy. Entonces, por favor, regístrense a los talleres de hoy. Y, pues, nos estamos viendo. Muchas gracias.